Finding insects is not difficult. Insects love moisture. So when you find something rotten like this, you're gonna find some bugs. My name is Isai Madris. I work in Southern Patagonia. I'm an entomologist and I focus on aquatic insects. So we're talking about flies. What I do is I go out into the wild, into areas where people have not gone before. And I try to find really cool, weird, old bugs. They can give you a lot of information. So they could be good bioindicators of water quality. They could be good bioindicators of the system in general, depending on where you find them. To me, an entomologist was like that guy that just works in a museum and doesn't do anything but just look at dead bugs, right? And then I started finding out about field work. So once I started seeing that you can actually not only discover new species, but you can find information that no one else has just by seeing how the insects live, you start being fascinated and knowing that no one's there to do that and you're the only one makes it magical. <laughs> the life cycle of an insect has four stages of development. And they have the egg, they have the larva, they have the pupa, for those that pupate, and then they have the adult. Egg is pretty self-explanatory. The larva is just the immature stage, basically the maggot. The vast majority of their life cycle is spent as immature, as larva or nymph. The pupa is the developmental stage in which they undergo huge transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly, for example. Adulthood, the vast majority of insects live as adults just to procreate. The ones that have incomplete metamorphosis are like sting bugs. They don't go through pupation. So nymphs, when you find baby sting bugs, it looks like a sting bug. So every time it molts, it just grows and looks more and more like the adult. Mayflies are a particular case in which they live very little as adults. The large swarms that you see in the Mississippi River, the adults end up living 24 hours, 48 at the most, and they do this mass swarms just to mate. So they spend one, two years feeding all the muck underneath the slow moving rivers. And then they just come out as adults for 24 hours. Why? We don't know. But once they come out, especially in those large numbers, they overwhelm predators. So you fight safety in numbers. Think of it as salmon. Salmon, they come in huge numbers, they spawn, they die, and they bring a lot of nutrients into the waterways. With mayflies, it's the same thing. And once they die, they just bring back all these nutrients into the areas that they died into. So if, if you're an animal that consumes insects and all of a sudden once a year, you know, you get all this food for free, of course you're gonna gorge on that. Little by little or year by year, you're gonna start depending on that food, food source around that time. And that's when you start seeing the food webs building upon one species. So if you remove that species of mayfly, you don't know who you're affecting because we don't know how many species are dependent on that species and that mass emergence. It's like a, like a building, right? If you have a, a, a stack of bricks and you remove the one on the bottom, you don't know how fast everything is going to fall. Insects are at the base of the food chain. Everything eats them, yeah, I, I eat them. <laughs> You don't have to go to where I go to be an explorer. You can just go out to the park and find something new and you're exploring something that you didn't know before. Being an explorer is just part of human nature, curiosity. Yeah. <laughs>